Thank you very much, and good afternoon, everyone. My name is Pierre Meinert Christensen, as Ali said. I'm the newly appointed president of Ørsted in Asia Pacific, and I'm here today to represent the company and talk about the need for a transition to a much greener world, to share our vision for eventually a world that runs entirely on green energy. I think it should be clear to everyone that the effects of the carbon emissions over the last many years is having an effect, indeed a very negative effect, all over the world. And uh, I think this is what creates a need for speed. I think it's very clear that uh, we are in a situation where, as we say here, our home needs help. It's uh, the effects of what we see all around the world. We see severe droughts, we see wildfires, and we see indeed serious flooding many places is something that uh, should make it very clear to all of us that there's an urgent need to help our climate to improve. So if we have a look here, I think it's very clear that uh, not only what I showed in the previous slide, which uh, is the effect we all see, but there's also a lot of signs and data behind the fact that uh, the rising greenhouse gas emissions, they drive up global temperatures. And this is something we cannot ignore. And that's why we have embarked on a very serious mission to help transforming the world into a place that runs entirely on green energy. In other words, there is an urgent need for speed as we see it. Now, if we take a look here at, um, at the various solutions that Ørsted is providing, you will see that offshore wind is where we are biggest and we need offshore wind in the coming years will play a very important part in the transition to a world that runs entirely on green energy. We are also in onshore renewables. You can see we have a built out capacity that we have uh, ambitions to increase over the coming years. We also run bioenergy and other types of um, electricity generation. And then also the very interesting area of hydrogen and green fuels, where the need for storage of green fuel is becoming evident. And this is an area where we also want to play. So the capacities you see here that we already have of installed capacity is something where we expect a very significant increase in the coming years. And if we look a little bit closer to our offshore wind business, we already now have 7.6 gigawatt operational. In fact, if you look right now, one in four turbines installed uh, globally at the sea is installed by our company, Ørsted. We have a further three and a half gigawatt under construction. And to support this, we have more than 3,000 dedicated offshore wind colleagues. At Ørsted, we both develop, we construct, and we operate the offshore wind farms. And for that, we have a very, very strong global base of dedicated employees who support this. So this is also a testament to Ørsted being a provider that is in this here for the long haul because we believe so much in the green transition. And if we look at our ambitions, well, globally, the ambition is, as stated here, 30 gigawatt of offshore wind by 2030. And we are very well on, on a path to achieve our ambitions in this respect. And Ørsted is developing its global footprint rapidly. Here I am showing a map of where we are already represented. We are having a lot of activities currently in the United States, which is also embarking on a fast transition, not least with the new regulatory frameworks adopted by the administration over there. If we look in Europe, this is where it all started for us. Started in Denmark and then expanded to United Kingdom. And we have a huge capacity of installed um, offshore wind there. And we have a lot under development as well. But of course, very exciting for us is the journey that we have now embarked on in this part of the world, in Asia Pacific. And we are right now present in four markets. We have our regional head office currently in Taiwan. One of the main reasons for this being that this is where we started our development of offshore wind farms within the region. But that is only the starting point. We are now rapidly expanding our footprint. So we have huge ambitions for the potential in Asia Pacific, 
because it's obvious with the population and not least the population and energy growth, there's a very large need for a green transition in this part of the world. And just a little bit about the track record, because as perhaps not many people are aware, we had the world first offshore wind farm more than 30 years ago in Denmark. So we have a lot of experience in developing, constructing and operating wind farms. And that is the experience that we are now taking out to the rest of the world and not least to Asia Pacific. And this has been a continued development where we together with our partners have built larger and larger wind farms, gaining more scale and gaining more efficiency and thereby expanding rapidly the installed capacity. So right now we have the world's largest wind farm in operation in outside of UK, the Horn C2 wind farm, which we commissioned finally this year and where we have 165 turbines delivering 1.3 gigawatt. And then moving again to Asia Pacific, as we did just a few years ago, again, we managed to be the front runner in setting up onshore, offshore wind farms. So now we are about to put into operation Asia Pacific's first large scale wind farm in Taiwan will come online next year. And uh, it is a very large wind farm with a 900 megawatt of capacity and 111 turbines being installed there. We will be the first one to commission such a large wind farm. And I think the green transformation that Ørsted has been undergoing over the last 10 years is perhaps something that can inspire the entire green transformation that we need in the world. Ørsted is coming from a company called Dong, Danish Oil and Natural Gas, which was a utility based on, as the name says, oil and gas and coal-fired power plants. The company took a very bold decision 10 years ago, which was quite early in this whole development, that we wanted to transform into a completely green energy company. And this has also led to us for four years in a row, now being named the greenest renewable energy company in the world. A position that we aim very strongly to keep because we believe that it is important and it is something that serves to inspire the whole transformation we are going through. So I think when we look at the transformation we've been through and the reductions we have in our internal emissions of greenhouse gases, this is something that the whole world can achieve as well. So in short, let's create a world that runs entirely on green energy. Here you can see on this slide the development within uh, wind turbines over the last few years. And it's very clear that uh, scale is also in this respect something that will lead to higher efficiencies and will lead to reduce the cost of green energy. When we embarked on this journey, when the wind turbines were as small as you see here on the left hand side, the cost of green energy was very high and a lot of subsidies were needed. We have seen that together with our partners, we have developed the industry now coming into very large scale wind turbines here up to 12 megawatt and the development is continuing after that. And that gives a lot of scale and that's also what is bringing down the cost of green energy which is needed and which we have seen develop so drastically into now being a competitive form of energy in most part of the world. So I think, in short, what is it that it takes for us to proceed with this? We have seen in Taiwan what can be achieved if there is a good regulatory framework and a good support. We've also seen what can, can happen if uh, it becomes too challenging. We need that it's very important that it is realized that offshore wind is being given a very clear and mandated role in the development of renewable energy sources for this also, as I mentioned, hydrogen and e-fuels. We think it's very important that this will be accelerated. It's very important to get a framework in place that really supports the development of these projects. They are large scale. They require a lot of development costs and they require a lot of stakeholder engagement with the local communities, with fisheries, etc. So we need a clear and dedicated effort to accelerate this transition. So, in short, 
we will catalyze sustainability in Asia Pacific and uh, we will have all these projects commissioned no later than 2030 to reach our target and ultimately going in 2040 to a completely carbon neutral footprint. We are setting ourselves very ambitious targets. We are doing it with so-called science-based targets, so it's very clear what it is you're aiming to achieve. And I think with the journey we are on, we are very confident that we will get to that target by the end of the day. So in short, our message is, let's create a world that runs entirely on green energy. Thank you very much for your attention.